Yeah, we are back and uh, I'm here. My name is Garrett Sussman, director of marketing of iPhone Rank, joined with none other than the, what, I don't even know what to call you these days. What's your title? Chief, Chief Relevance Officer, Chief Relevance Engineer Officer, CEO, Founder, and Chief Relevance Engineer Officer, Mike King. What's up, Mike? Whole lot of everything. <laughs> that's that's the world. It's all holistic. It's all coming together, and that's like kind of the topic we're we're, we're diving into. Because like we should just call this series like it's not just SEO because you're you're breaking down all these myths and and ridiculous conversations that we're seeing, and and we we're we're we're, we're able to talk about it here because it's like if either of us kind of get in a conversation online, we're just gonna say mean things to people, and that's <laughs> yeah. It's so frustrating at this point, like to watch people continue to say it's just SEO, especially like once you go outside into the real world and you're dealing with people, especially in enterprise brands, they're like, cool, well, we have all this budget opportunity. There's new line items, like tell me what this is. And people wanna keep being in the small SEO bucket and being like, why don't we get any resources? Why don't we make any money? Like just stop being stupid and lean into what is actually happening in the world. Or you can just keep saying it's just SEO and be mad and that could be you. But anyway, um, to that point, you know, I think like I had been saying from the beginning of this, um, the query fan out is really like the huge opportunity for us to do something different. And, you know, there's also some recent conversation about how like, oh, it's always been query fan out. Cool. Then why weren't you saying anything 30 years ago if that was true? Now, here's the thing. Yes. Synonymy has always been important. Um, you know, Google has always looked across the topic cluster. And I think that was more like for like kind of topical verification rather than like, oh, we are going to pull from this other page and then use it as part of the response. Um, now that's exactly what's happening, right? Like they're saying, okay, here's your core query. Let's extrapolate it into, you know, 10, 20, 40, 50, hundreds of queries in the case of deep research, and then use different elements of that to then stitch it into a finalized response. Um, and so where the opportunity lies is like, how do we have coverage across as many of those queries as possible? The way I've always been describing it is like, it's like a raffle. You wanna have as many raffle tickets as possible because after that, you lose any control because you know, there's that what they call a pairwise comparison between um, different passages to determine what they're going to use as part of that synthesis process. And so at that point, the language model is going to take over. You don't have control where you do have control is like, let me throw as much as that as I can at that language model. So I'm being considered at every turn. And then you have the most opportunity to be a part of that final response. So with query fan out you know we're learning a lot more and so you know we we built basically the first tool for it qforia and i've silently updated qforia kind of in the background just because we needed to like the whole doing one query at a time like that just isn't going to work for anybody so i made it so you can get uh, a bulk list of queries and i've also added some more features things that we had talked about in the ai search manual this concept of routing where the language model basically determines what sort of content do they expect for this synthetic query. So in some cases, it might be a video. In some cases, it might be a checklist. In some cases, it might be, you know, um, a listicle or, or whatever it is, right? And so now we have indications based on what Gemini says of here's what they are most likely going to want for this subquery which then tells you what to do, which is like, oh, I need a listicle here, or I need whatever the content item is, right? But then there's also the chatter around like, oh, well, if it's Gemini, that's not real data. Okay, fine. There's the other way that you can reverse engineer the query fan out, which is basically look at all the citations that do actually make it through the synthesis pipeline, and then uh, go to SEMrush and see what are all the keywords that those landing pages rank for and then intersect them. And wherever there are intersections, those are queries that are likely uh, use a part of that process. And then you can combine both data sets because I don't think you get, you know, 
the complete set by doing the reverse intersect uh, because there may be queries that there's no search volume for that are being considered here too. And so at best, what you do is you combine both so you have something that's like more complete. Um, and yeah, now like ChatGPT, you know, I mean, ChatGPT has been doing the fan out too. What we're seeing is that they do a lot less queries. So it's something like five to seven queries that are being used. Um, there's some great data that came out of the um, the profound team from the event that we did this week, their zero click uh, show here in New York. And they walked through like the query fan out process. They talked about how fast it happens and things like that. But yeah, that's the main difference that I'm seeing is that they just look at a lot less queries. And, you know, you can see those queries if you open up the inspect section of your um, browser while you're you're working through ChatGPT. If you click on the endpoint will be conversations and that will continue to get updated. And so when you run your prompt, it'll show you something that says like, I think it says like search queries or, or it's like basically look for queries in all that JSON and you'll see it. And, you know, again, I've not seen more than like seven queries pop up. More often than not, it's like three to five. And yeah, also the profound team is now providing that data as well. So, you know, I think that's one of the key differences that you have to do in this, in these AI search environments is identify these queries, identify your coverage across those queries, what content is most likely expected, and then create what's missing so that you have more opportunities to appear in these engines. It's so much more complex. And, you know, for us, like, and when we're working with clients in engagement, like the keyword portfolio matrix is the bedrock of your entire content strategy. And to your point about it, it's not just SEO, like people aren't doing this type of research. So it's not just about keywords. It's not just about topics. It's that intersection that you're talking about. It's like a scientific approach to all of the queries related to the topic. One last question that I have is like, knowing that this can expand rapidly and become unwieldy, you know, even for an enterprise brand, how do you think about prioritization for content strategy based on the, the query fan outs and the potential for this to become too much? Yeah, I mean, it goes back to the searing pan that we always use. Like, what are your business objectives? Where's your audience? What do you care about? We're not gonna like say, hey, make a million pages so that you cover all of the fan out for every query in your space. Like, what is the priority for you? And also in some cases, you may already have that content. You may not need to do anything. So it may not need to be that you create, you know, billions of pieces of content. However, I think inevitably we will have a lot of people, especially with the advent of generative AI, that are going to generate a piece of content for all of these things. At which point, you know, it, it's really about who can scale most effectively. And, you know, the same systems or the same sort of paradigms that um, drive this sort of, you know, capability of these search engines is the same thing that people are using, retrieval augmented generation. So I think at some point, once the tools get good enough, it is gonna be the same problem that we've already have, where it's kind of this zero, zero sum game where everyone can do everything. And then we're back to the point of like, what are the points of di differentiation? What data do you have that no one else has? And that kind of goes back to my other point that we discussed previously, where I said that, you know, cloaking is actually a viable thing to do in these environments because you don't want everyone easily lifting your content. And that can be effectively your moat. You're like, okay, I generate the thing that no one else has, that these, these machines want, that people obviously also want, and then I make it difficult for anyone else to steal it. That's really like where all this is going. I, I love it. And and it ties into everything that we're doing too. Cause like you do that, that cure portfolio to your point, you might already have the content. It just might not be extractable or it might not be in the formats that you need. That's why, you know, you do this omni media content audit, go through everything and make sure that it's available for all of these different, you know, conversational search platforms in the way that your, your raffle, you're basically multiplying your raffle tickets when you do an Omni Media content audit and then actually optimize all of these different content. And the extractability is making sure that it's readable, parsable, chunkable. Like I know people hate their chunks, whatever.
get over it. Like, mm -hmm. except the fact that like, well, it's like, you know what you're talking about and people are fighting you on it. It's so goofy that like, I saw somebody <laughs> that I deeply respect say chunking is a scam. And it's like, how can you believe that these systems work up in a way where they are indexing passages and the passage is like the atomic understanding that they're extracting and using to generate the response. But the idea of making better passages is a scam. It makes no sense. It's like you just want to be able to say something because you're a thought leader. You don't have to have a thought on everything. You can just like be like, hey, this is cool, whatever. I'm just going to keep it moving and have a thought on something I actually know something about. Yep. Like yep. cut it out. <laughs> So I, why I do I do respect the people with their heads down and just doing the work. Um, and if you're one of those people who are doing the work, I mean, so like we're doing our our AI search strategy program. We're doing a pilot. Uh, if you want to kind of like launch that keyword portfolio with the matrix into the Omni Media uh, content audit, into the Omni Media content plan, and and how to measure all of this through AI search measurement, uh, we get we got opportunity. So so book a meeting with me, but. This is the stuff. This is the stuff, and and uh, I, I, I'm I'm forcing function right here, putting Mike on the spot, but he's got a blog post coming out uh, about all this <laughs> stuff as well. So there, it's in the internet. So keep your eyes peeled. Anyway, Garrett, sign off. Mike, what do you got? That's all I got. Not just SEO. Get out of here.